Don't you hate it when you're watching a YouTube video and you get the volume to a comfortable spot and you settle in to watch only to be suddenly hit by a massive change of volume that almost deafens you? Or maybe you've just struggled to get your own video audio to a consistent level. Well, today I'm gonna to show you a single setting that's super easy to add, no matter what mic or editing software you're using, that will instantly make your audio levels consistent throughout your video, especially when it comes to voiceovers. And it doesn't require any artificial intelligence at all. But first, what's causing that inconsistent volume in the first place? Well, it's probably obvious, but audio has different levels when it comes to volume. You have loud sounds and then you have quiet sounds and the difference between the two is known as dynamic range. When you see audio signals inside editing software, you see high points and low points on the graph. Think of it kind of like peaks and troughs in waves on the ocean. The higher the wave, the louder the volume and then the lower the wave, the lower the volume. Now a healthy level for your audio is a little bit below zero on your audio meter. If it's too far below this, the audio will be too quiet and if it goes above this, your audio will start to distort. The first thing you'll probably think to do is adjust the overall volume, also known as the gain of the audio. But all this does is it moves the waves up and down, including the peaks and troughs. If you have huge waves, they'll still be huge even if you turn the volume down and your troughs will just be even quieter and harder to hear. What we want is for all the peaks and troughs to be much closer together so that there's less of a wide range. We want our audio to be more like the waves on a gentle bay beach, not like huge open ocean surf waves. Now the setting this whole video is about will reduce the waves to a nice even size in just a few clicks, resulting in super clear and consistent audio where your peaks aren't too high and your troughs aren't too low. But before you can edit any audio, you obviously first need to record it. So here's a few tips and tricks on how to optimize your recording so that it works well with this particular setting. And like I said, it doesn't matter what mic you're using, these tips will apply across the board. So first of all, try to keep your mic a consistent distance distance away from yourself or your speaker at all times. And this just helps to ensure you get really consistent waves from the start. Next, try to minimize any echo, especially if you're recording in a small room like I am right now. If the mic picks up any echo, it will just become even more obvious once we apply our setting. Third, make sure you remove any background noise. Even if you think it's on the quiet side, think air cons and fans as much as you think about loud external noises. Again, once we apply our setting, those noises will just be amplified and you don't want that. Now, once you've recorded your audio, you're ready to apply our setting to maximize quality and consistency of your audio. And this setting can be found in all mainstream editors, including Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and DaVinci. You don't need any external plugins and there's no artificial intelligence involved. So all you need is the compressor effect. In fact, most of the time, the compressor is the only setting that I apply to my audio for my YouTube videos. So how do you apply it and get the best settings? Well, let me just quickly explain how the compressor actually works. If you think about a wave analogy again, where we have these huge surf waves in our raw recording, what the compressor is gonna do is it's gonna squash those huge peaks and bring up the troughs. So we've got a much more even and consistent audio level. So in order to achieve this, there's just a couple of things you have to do. Just go to your audio effects in your editing software, find a compressor effect, add this to your audio and then open up the effect. The two main settings you need to get started is the ratio and the makeup or makeup gain. You can get heaps more involved with compression, but for now, this is all you need to get started. Think of the first setting, the ratio, is how much you're gonna squash those peaks and lift the troughs. I find setting this to around three usually works pretty well for me, but have a play around with it and see what works for your audio. If you have a super wide dynamic range, you might need this number to be higher, but if your audio already has a pretty low range, this number might be a little bit lower. Once you've squashed those peaks with the ratio setting, you might need to lift up the overall volume back up to healthy levels. And this is where the makeup gain comes in. You're basically just making up that lost volume that you took away by squashing the peaks. Again, this will vary a lot depending on how loud or quiet your original recording was. But again, try to get the loudest parts of your audio up to just a bit below zero. Somewhere around the negative 3 dB mark is a good place to aim for social media content. This will mean your viewers likely won't have to turn up their volume and won't be shocked by any surprise volume changes. And just like that, in a couple of clicks, you've made your audio far more consistent and listenable, which hopefully will result in better watch 
watch time and more views. But you can't apply any of these settings before you actually have a microphone, which is why I created this video here where I compare the most common types of microphones with actual audio examples for you to hear. So I just finished editing the video and I realized I completely forgot to mention my email newsletter, Create Better. So if you're interested in more of this type of content, then make sure you sign up to the newsletter in the description. I basically just share everything that I know and I've learned over the past few years about content creation and videography. So check it out below.